This tutorial is all about empirical formulas, how we calculate them from experimental data or from percentage by mass data, and how we can use the empirical formula and the relative formula mass to work out the molecular formula. Now, the empirical formula isn't the same as the molecular formula. The empirical formula is a kind of simplest formula, if you like, the simplest whole number ratio of each type of atom in a compound. The empirical formula then is the simplest whole number ratio of each type of atom in a compound. If we look at this compound on the right, butane, one we met in uh, module C1, you can see from its displayed formula it's got four carbons and it's got ten hydrogens around it. So, of course, its molecular formula describes how many of each kind of atom are in one molecule, so it's C4H10. But the empirical formula is the simplest ratio, and that cancels down to C2H5. So here's a couple of examples. What's the empirical formula of dinitrogen tetroxide, or N2O4? Well, the number 2 goes into each of those, so simplified, that would be N1, invisible 1 only to because you can see, O2. And for hexene, C6H10, again, this can divide down by 2, so that could be C3H5. Here's a very simple past paper question. Sodium peroxide's got the formula Na2O2, so what's the empirical formula? Well, that's the simplest ratio, and you could divide each of those by 2, so that's going to be Na1O1, one one, or NaO. And there, surprisingly enough, is your answer. It does get a bit harder than this. So here's another kind of question. Uh, calculating the empirical formula from experimental data, a worked example. Now experimentally it was found that a compound contained 8.9 grams of carbon, 0.74 grams of hydrogen, and 23.7 grams of oxygen. Now, in order to find out the formula for this, we need to know not in the masses, but we need to know the moles or numbers of or ratio of numbers of atoms. So we're going to work out how many moles of each of these we have. So we're going to divide each of them by the mass of one mole, because remember the number of moles is the mass over the molar mass, and the molar mass for carbon is 12 grams, the molar mass for hydrogen is one gram, and the molar mass for oxygen is 16 grams. I knew these or you could look them up on a periodic table. Working these out for carbon that's 0.742 to 3 sig figs. Uh, for hydrogen that's going to be 0.74 and for oxygen it's 1.48 to the right number of significant figures. Now, you may already see a relationship between those numbers, but the simplest way of doing this is to work out the simplest whole number ratio by making one of these one. In other words, by dividing uh, each of them by the smallest figure. The smallest figure is 0.74, so we're going to divide this one by 0.74, and we're going to get, well, call it 1. We're going to divide that by 0.74, and we're going to get, well, definitely 1. And we're going to divide this one by 0.74, and we're going to get... 2. So we've got 1 carbon to 1 hydrogen to 2 oxygens or CHO2 for our empirical formula. Sometimes instead of individual masses we're given percentages by mass but don't let this phase you because you've just got to imagine you've got 100 grams. Now, if I had 100 grams of this substance, then for phosphorus, I would have, of that, 56.4 grams. And for oxygen, I'd have 43.6 grams. And from now on, I just use exactly the same method. To work out the number of moles, I need to divide each of these by the molar mass. And for phosphorus, phosphorus got a relative atomic mass of 31, so I'm going to divide that one by 31.0 grams. And oxygen of 16, so I'm going to divide that by 16.0 grams. For phosphorus, this gives me an answer of 1.82 moles of phosphorus. And for oxygen, that's going to give me a figure of 2.7 
three moles. Now, they don't seem to be very easy to work out. So what I'm going to do again is divide each of them by the smaller number. That divided by 1.82 is going to come to one mole, whereas for oxygen, that divided by 1.82 comes to 1.497 or 1.5. Now again, we're not getting two whole numbers, but we can clearly see that this 1.5 to 1 ratio is the same as saying a ratio of 2 to 3. So here the formula is P2O3 as an empirical formula to the simplest whole number ratio. Sometimes, however, we might have to calculate or be given the empirical formula and then be asked, well, what's the molecular formula if we're given the molar mass? Well, of course, the empirical formula will multiply up to give us the molar mass. Uh, so it might be any multiple of the empirical formula. Here's a couple of examples. Here we're given the empirical formula is CO. Now, uh, let's work out what the mass of the empirical formula is. In other words, the empirical mass. And for carbon, that's going to be 12. And for oxygen, that's going to be 16. So add them together, and we get 28. So the uh, mass of the molecule is... Uh, currently for the empirical formula 28 but that's also the same as the molar mass so we can only get one lot of CO into 28 grams therefore that must mean that that is also the molecular formula so the molecular formula is also CO here in our second example we've got phosphorus oxide a form of phosphorus oxide P2O3 now the P2 is going to be two lots of 31 which is 62 and the O3 is going to be uh, 3 lots of 16, which is 48. And that added together is going to give us 110 for our empirical mass, 110 grams. But the molar mass is 220 grams. So let's do 220 over 110, which is 2. So the multiplying factor is 2. Our molecular formula must be twice what our empirical formula is then. So our molecular formula is P4O6.